I'm Ashton Addison from EventChain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Salim Ali and Sadiq Kwasim from Loyak. Salim, Sadiq, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Hi Ashton, good to see you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, same here. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Salim, if you would start, could you please give us an overview of the project and the solutions that you guys are providing in the data industry? Thank you, Ashton. Happy to. So what LOAC is attempting to do is to build a platform so that enterprises, businesses can share data outside their company boundaries, but still have the ability to track it and, and understand where it's going once it leaves their company boundaries. Wonderful. Uh, you know, data is king in this world, so I'm glad that you guys are providing solutions in that area. But there has been some talk about data in the recent times, specifically towards GDPR, one of the hottest topics, in fact, especially in Europe. Sadiq, I know you guys are over in Europe. Some people think that blockchains, having data immutable on those blockchains, poses a risk to GDPR. How is Loyak dealing with this right now? So one of the things that <clears throat> LOAG does is we track the underlying data and which is basically solving majority of the GDPR challenge. So GDPR, it, according to Article 17, is the right to be forgotten. And uh, what we are able to do is being able to track, know where that data is at any point in time and have full control over it, uh, regardless of whether it's within your uh, firewall, which is fairly simple and you have control over that. But when it leaves your firewalls, goes to other uh, other systems owned by third parties that you just don't have control over it. What we are able to do with the LOAC token is being able to track the data where it is at any point in time and have uh, complete access to it. That's great. And Salim, are you guys actually storing the data on a blockchain or are you just using the blockchain to track that data? I know one of the early use cases of blockchain was IPFS and decentralized storage. So I see us moving towards that in the future perhaps, but is that where we're at now or are we simply tracking the data using the blockchain? Yes, yeah, so it's a hybrid model, Ashton. It's a very good point, right? For two reasons. One, data today sits in on-premise on data clouds. It sits outside in public clouds. It sits in app clouds as well, like Salesforce, whatever. So the problem is data is anyway across boundaries. Putting data onto a blockchain is very heavy handed. Blockchain is not meant for that. So we are using a hybrid approach whereby the data sits in an IP of a system, but the blockchain has a record and the transaction log that points to the data, thereby achieve the uh, ability to track, but not be slowed down by the large footprint of data in the blockchain itself. Wonderful. And it sounds like an obvious solution and I'm glad you guys are working on it, but there must be other competitors in the space that are trying to do the same thing. Are there other it's competitors? Right? In... Yeah, yeah, it's interesting, right? People who understand blockchain don't enterprise and don't fully understand the complexity of enterprise applications and vice versa. So we happen to come from the world of SAP, Oracle, Sable, VMware, HP. So we are kind of bringing the worlds together. So therefore, it, just understanding blockchain alone is step one. So we are building an enterprise get application on top. Therefore, at this stage, we seem to be the first ones out of the gate by a wide margin. I'm sure people will follow, especially if you are successful. But for now, we have a clear run and people will be catching up inevitably. And how much information do enterprises use, need to know about blockchain to efficiently use Loyak? You know, blockchain is plumbing. Enterprises need not know or care that it's on blockchain, right? It doesn't matter. You're providing a business value and a business function that happens to use blockchain because it's the best done technology for this purpose. But when we sell and we talk to our customers and prospects, we don't emphasize that you need to be an expert in blockchain. In fact, you don't have to be. The platform masks the complexity so that for them, it's an easy enterprise great application. Wonderful. And you mentioned earlier that part of your team has worked for SAP, some big data center companies. Could you speak a little bit more about your core team and any high-level advisors you guys have on Loyak? Yeah, so the, the team spans 
SAP, Oracle Siebel, HP, E-Trade, IBM. So the core team is very, very savvy. We think enterprise, we, uh, we know how to build enterprise-grade products. That's number one. In addition to that, we have our advisory board is blue chip from XSAP CMO, from Nissan Motors, from Zurich Insurance, some of the largest enterprise companies on the planet. So that helps us get a very deep insight into their needs. That's the idea there. And thirdly, if you look at that broadly, right, it's a very global footprint. Our advisors sit in, you know, in Brazil, in Europe, in Japan, in the US. So we want to have that transparency across regions because our market is global, right? So that's the mix we have. Sadiq, anything to add to that? Yeah, I think one of the main things is that most, I guess, uh, blockchain companies that have gone through uh, this process have a lot of crypto advisors. We have some of those on board as we went through our ICO, but we have paid more attention to having uh, sort of Tony Thomas, who is uh, CIO of Nissan, or, or uh, Eric Resumen, who is uh, CTO of Zurich Insurance from Latin America. And the reason we have those sort of fairly, I guess, uh, hefty individuals on our board is the solutions that we are developing is going to have a high impact on their business model and how they want to move forward. And which is why they've come on board uh, to, you could say, a startup like Loyak uh, and the vision that we have. That's great. And I think that goes back to the fact that as you are growing, really a lot of your customers, as you said, Salim, they don't need to know about blockchain or cryptocurrency. It's the plumbing, it's the back end, it's how it works. But knowing the industry, the data industry, is what's really going to push you guys and give you that competitive advantage moving forward. It's interesting, Ashton. You said a very subtle point, which is very important, right? Uh, businesses care about value. Of course, the tech is important, but the prop, the challenge always is to make tech simple enough, not complex, easy to make it complex. So we are focused on making it simple. I'll give you an example, right? Think of us as the FedEx for the digital world. If you send a physical letter today, you know a, a truck driver picked it up from your home, it got to a clearing station, it went on a plane, you can track it completely. But ironically, you can't do that for your digital data. Once I send something to you outside my firewall, I'm completely blind. That's ridiculous in this day and age. We're saying we bring transparency like never before and happen to use blockchain to do that, right? So that's what we're essentially trying to do. That's wonderful, Salim. And are you guys already doing that right now? What point is Loyak at in the market? Is the product released? Do you guys have customers? I'd love to hear a little bit about that. So we built version one, which is being tested out and trial right now. And it's not on blockchain yet by design. We put it on MySQL in AWS. Because we wanted to get the other aspects nailed down first, the, the process flow, the content engine, the UX layer. We got all of that done and we have customers using it today. These are multi-billion dollar companies using it today. Now we are working on transforming the underlying data store, moving it onto something like Hyperledger for more the IPFS plus uh, Hyperledger combo for able to be able to track it. So that's where we are right now. I'll give you a quick story, a short anecdote actually. I was at a company about two months back in the Bay Area in Silicon Valley, the largest cloud security company on the planet. And they're telling me, Salim, do you have this today? We want to use it. Because the problem is they are able to protect data at the firewalls, people coming in. But once data left their firewall to their partners to support uh, uh, organizing outside, they can't track it. Which means if they can't track it, this GDPR compliance violation. If you don't know where data is, how can you pull it back? How can it be forgotten? So that's the example we are working, we're excited, we are working towards. Wow, that's awesome. And I know I've heard things about, you know, if you break the rules of GDPR, there are very hefty fines. So finding a solution like this, I'm sure, you know, just avoiding those fines altogether is just one thing, but improving the transparency and traction of document sending sounds like a lot of enterprises should be using this. So are you guys have, do you guys have customers globally already or are you based it mainly in the Bay Area? No, our, our customers are across the globe. We have customers in Europe, in Asia, 
and the US as well. And we've been very cautious in not trying to have too many because we can consume so many, uh, because we want to make sure the version we're building is enterprise grade before we go mass. So this year is going to be building and tightening the product so that it's ready for mass consumption. And then starting next year, we'll try to go even larger and broader. So we are in the, if you will, in the incubation phase right now. Sadiq, anything to add there? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, we have had this where our existing customers have said, look, we love what, what the product that you're providing for us. Can we roll this out across different business units within the organization? And to be honest, and this is something that Salim and myself and our CTO, we had this constant uh, conversation where we are saying, hold off, let us build this uh, the proper way once we have learned from uh, what how they're using it uh, before we uh, go all out. So to a certain extent, we're saying hold back till we've got the whole thing uh, completely uh, nailed down. That's great. And as you guys develop out a more well-rounded customer base, how do you plan to monetize that or what's the business model that's going to be put in into Loyak? Yeah, it's pretty simple. Think of it as a SaaS model. It's blockchain in the cloud an application stack on blockchain in the cloud. So our license model is a license fee to bootstrap the network, if you will. Then we charge customers based on the number of nodes they want within their private partner network. And thirdly, it's usage consumption based. If you use it for X amount of data, you pay a fee. If you want to go to the next year, you pay more. So basically the idea is make it consumption driven. You pay for what you use, as simple as that. But all SaaS, all cloud. Simple is great. I also have a burning question for Sadiq. In the news, we've seen a lot of data breaches for major tech companies like Facebook, LinkedIn, some of the biggest companies in the world. Is Loyak Solutions something that could solve these data breaches moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> data breaches usually happen by two reasons. One is human interactions. Uh, and there's nothing we can do where someone is going to be uh, malicious, right? All we can do is uh, have things in place where if there is data that has been moved around and we're tracking it, and there are certain business rules that will be within the smart contract saying, if something wavers outside that, it triggers something off. And that trigger might be, cut access to that data. So you might have a data leak happening, or if someone is taking data, putting it on a USB stick, uh, it picks it up to say, well, that's not something that we won't allow and cut off the access to that organization or that individual. And we have the debt down to a granular level where the customer can then define the type of security access uh, levels right out across their organization and their uh, partners. That's great. Cut it off at the source, right? Uh, I like that That's moving it. forward. <laughs> protect our personal privacy and data. Sounds like you guys have something really great going on. How can people learn more about Loyak and get involved? So the, the main is uh, our website, loyak.io, but we do have a fairly uh, strong uh, Telegram channel which has, I think we have found over the last few months, a lot of our supporters who have purchased tokens during ICO understand the space quite well. Uh, we're different from most ICOs, where we're talking about data, data security, and the enterprise. And we've started seeing people who work within that industry coming up to us and saying, hey, I know exactly what you mean because I go through this problem and I face this problem day in and day out. And uh, hence, there's a lot of active conversations about exactly this uh, taking place on the channel. So uh, yeah, the LOAC Telegram channel will, it will be the ideal place. Wonderful. I'll leave the description, uh, the links to your website and the Telegram in the description box below. And I really appreciate you guys taking the time. Salim, Sadiq, it's been a pleasure speaking with you. Um, looking forward to following up in the coming months. And until then, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank a pleasure. you very much. It's a pleasure talking to you.